Hey guys, it's Paul here for TFL Car and I am at Laguna Seca. And as you can see going by us, it's the brand new 2021 Acura TLX Type S. And the, the burning question on everyone's mind is the return of the Type S. Is it worthy? Is this some sort of uh, cosmetic pack package and a cool paint job or is there more to it than that? Well, that's what we want to find out. So we're going to dig through this car from top to bottom. Eventually, we're going to get some di driving impressions. We're going to see how this car actually performs uh, on the road and on the track. So the engine under the hood of the 2021 TLX Type S is actually a completely new 3.0-liter V6. Now, Acura, of course, has had V6s for a long time, but this is a completely new design. So 3 liters in displacement has a much smaller cylinder head to make the engine more compact. Uh, they actually integrated the, the top of the rocker arms into the valve cover to lower the engine because of the styling demanded a much lower hood line. And then it has a turbocharger, of course, which is really cool. Uh, and it's a single turbo, it's right here, and it's actually a twin scroll, so not to be confused with a twin turbo. A twin scroll is when you're using the exhaust gases from the front of the engine and the back of the engine, since it's a transverse V6, and each of those have their own entry into the turbine wheel of the turbocharger, and that gives you a quicker spool-up response of the turbo, and, uh, and then you can actually size a slightly larger turbo. So it works a lot like a twin turbo would, but you're doing it with less complexity and less weight, because you get to use a single turbocharger. There's a 10-speed automatic uh, also. That thing's been completely gone through with shot peen gears and bigger, uh, bigger uh, gears faces themselves and, and quicker shifting, and it's 40% quicker in upshifts and downshifts and 10 speeds. And you combine that with this engine's 355 horsepower and big broad torque curve. And, and I was talking about when you're, you know, when you're driving this car, you can almost leave it in any one of two or three gears and it's got as much torque as you need to and those because those gear ratios are also so close together. And then the, the star of the show for this car, to be quite honest, and really any of the higher end Acuras, is their super handling all-wheel drive system. It's a very special all-wheel drive system. It can put 70% of the torque to the rear wheels, but the really cool thing is, is it has true mechanical torque vectoring. So, so not torque vectoring, you see it all the time. Everyone says, oh, we have torque vectoring in our car where they have a program in their stability control that applies the brakes on the inside corner when it senses the car is trying to run wide or understeer. Mechanical torque vectoring actually has two differentials in the back, it's completely different. And it can overdrive the rear wheel and steer the car like that. So you can think of it like a canoe. Do you want to steer your canoe by putting one oar in the water and, and basically stopping it and letting it pivot around that? that uh, or or do you want to over paddle on the other side and make the canoe turn a lot faster it still does the same turn one makes it stop one makes it go so that's the difference between a mechanical torque vectoring system such we have in this car which is far better than the electronic brake on the inside torque vectoring system that basically almost everyone else has the m diff from bmw has real torque vectoring the sport diff from audi uh, there's a few other companies, but 90% of them out there are the brake style torque vectoring systems. And so that's what makes this very special because it's unique in its price point uh, at its place in the market to have a true mechanical torque vectoring system. So a really cool powertrain, 10 speed automatic with really fast shifts and paddles and all that good stuff. Uh, and brand new 60 degree all aluminum V6 with a twin scroll turbocharger. Uh, not a huge horsepower number at 355, but again, the overall package of this car, it's, it's a really interesting car. Uh, can't wait to drive it on the track, can't wait to drive it on the road. Um, I think it's really going to be an impressive car, especially at the price point it sits at against the vehicles that it competes against. Type S 2021 with a brand new V6 engine, new chassis, just amazing uh, improvements to this car. It's a real contender against something like an Audi S4 or an AMG uh, C43, for example. And uh, feels really good, very responsive brake pedal, very light steering, probably a little lighter than I would like, but super responsive with a very fast ratio and a really quick electric pump that they have on the system. So. Uh, really enjoyable car. 
I'm, I'm surprised. And again, that super handling all-wheel drive system has always been pretty special relative to all the all-wheel drive systems on the market. And it does real, true torque vectoring, which means instead of torque vectoring by using the brakes, it's actually torque vectoring by using power to the outside. So it overpowers the outside versus underpowering the inside. And it, the car rotates really nicely through these corners. So I think Acura is really back with a bang here with this car. It's very, very interesting that they're coming out with it now. You know, we're sort of getting used to being an electric car after a hybrid car after an electric car. And here's a real sports sedan, you know, back on, back on the market. And it has all those good bones, stiffened chassis, you know, just all sorts of improvements that they've made to the car. And you can feel that torque vectoring as you put the power down out of the corner, overdriving, 2.9% overdriving the outside rear wheel. And that's given us a little bit more um, basically balance through the corner and less understeer from the car. And that's just something wonderful because this is a transverse V6 turbocharged engine. So it, this car has a fairly heavy front weight bias as it would. And so torque vectoring is a really crucial thing on a vehicle like this to really get the vehicle to feel like a very well balanced, good handling car. And it's certainly doing that. Now it's not just a new engine and a uprated transmission and the latest generation of super handling all wheel drive. Also the chassis of the car, they basically improved the stiffness of the TLX S type over the standard TLX by adding all this body bracing all over the structure. And so they've got this extra stiffness in the car that helps with the stiffer spring rate, stiffer any roll bar rate. So when you're upping the performance of the vehicle, you got to make sure that the, the chassis of the car isn't going to start twisting as a result. So you've got to proportionally stiffen it and they've done all that. So there's, there's been a lot of homework. This car was five years in the making. Um, and so it's not just an appearance package, some flashy new tiger eye paint, which is kind of cool. Um, but inside the car, all the bits and pieces, all the engineering, all of it's also been thoroughly upgraded to kind of earn the right to use the Type S badge. Engine pulls pretty well. It's very linear in its torque curve all the way up through, just stayed at full throttle, climbing the hill up towards the corkscrew here. Down the famous corkscrew, full throttle, a little bit of wheel spin as I came over the crest there. That was kind of fun. Car rotates nicely into turn nine. through turn 10, which is a really nice high-speed corner. Again, a little bit of understeer going in, but very neutral to a slight oversteer on the way out. Definitely feel the torque vectoring. Absolutely love that. It's right where you normally would expect a car to potentially understeer, and it just doesn't. It just puts the power down and, and is neutral to maybe slightly oversteer. And it's not oversteer like you need to correct it. It's just oversteer where you have to maybe get rid of a little bit of steering for the corner, so that's a good thing. Less steering means you're going faster through the same given corner. So these mechanical torque vectoring systems, and Acura has very, you know, one of the very few real torque vectoring systems on the market, really make a massive difference. And if you're into performance, you really want one of these systems. All right, here we are with the Type S, taking a look at wheels, tires, and suspension. Uh, first of all, you're getting a 20 inch wheel. They have two different options on wheels. Uh, both of them are 20 inch, but uh, this is the lightweight kind of five spoke, looks sort of like the NSX wheel. So this is the performance version. And so here we've, we've got a 255, 35, 20, uh, and it is a, a, a Pirelli uh, P0. And you notice those big red brakes, um, they, they say Acura on them, but they are very willing to admit those are actually Brembo. So we've got some big, uh, nice Brembo four piston uh, caliper brakes uh, up front. And then another thing, and anyone that's an Acura person would know this, but it's very typical uh, in these sort of midpoint cars on down that they'd be a McPherson strut front suspension, which is the common cheaper front suspension that you see in a lot of vehicles. Um, Acura has always been a proponent of the double wishbone and, and this vehicle of course has a double wishbone suspension um, and a multi-link rear suspension in the rear. So we've got kind of top shelf suspension components, really good brakes and, uh, and just a great driving package all around.
the interior of the car is definitely performance oriented. Uh, you've got 16 way adjustable seats, which include adjustable bolsters, which is absolutely fantastic. I'm a little guy and, uh, and I, I love to have, be able to have those bolsters come in. Um, you've got a very adjustable steering wheel, of course, with tilt and telescope. It is manual, uh, with the flat bottom on it, like you'd have on an NSX and, Everything is fairly easy, like everything is controlled by a single dynamic knob on the vehicle as far as the chassis attributes. You can go between comfort, sport, you know, into uh, or normal and into sport plus. So you have these different, um, different drive modes that you grab in the knob here and that, that takes care of your engine, your transmission, the uh, adjustable shock absorbers on the car, the settings on the differential. Uh, all of that stuff is, is falls under the domain. There is an individual mode where you can go in and set that stuff. And that's something I like to do quite often. Like I'll do a setting for what I would consider to be like rain driving, where I want to leave the suspension soft, for example, or sometimes the sport throttle response is too sharp. So you'll have normal throttle response and put everything else on sport plus mode. Hey, it's up to you, right? That's the whole point of individual mode. So you've got all that stuff going on um, within the car. And of course, it's got a 17 speaker stereo system with two subwoofers in the back. Again, those super adjustable seats aren't just for performance, but you they also have ventilation. And certainly one of my favorite features on a car and that's inductive charging. And it's really nicely, conveniently located right there next to your armrest. And that's what makes this maybe like one of those ultimate daily drivers. And it's in that right price point where you're talking about, you know, low fifties is what they're saying for this vehicle. It hasn't been announced yet. So don't hold me to that, but that's, they're, they're thinking it's going to land there. So the 2021 Acura TLX Type S is actually kind of a, jack of all trades and a little bit of a master of all trades too. It's a pretty enjoyable place to spend time. Good steering, it is electric power steering, but they've kind of gone to great lengths with a belt driven higher output pump to give you better steering feel and quicker response from the steering wheel. I think the drive modes are probably my favorite thing about this car because it affects so many things. Like in some cars, really all you're doing is playing with the powertrain and you're just adjusting uh, engine mapping and a little bit of transmission mapping. But here we also have suspension that's adjustable on this car. We have exhaust node that's adjustable on the car. So you've got a lot of different parameters and it really does change the personality. And changing the personality means what we're doing is we're sort of broadening the capabilities of the car. It has different kind of modes and therefore you can drive it in different ways and that's what makes it a capable kind of all-around car where you've got something where hey I want to I want to you know punch across and drive lots and lots of miles today or I want to do a scenic drive like we're doing right now uh, or I want to go drive on the racetrack it kind of has the capability to do all those things because the drive modes actually do stuff One of the neat little features that they can do with modern cars these days is things you can do with LED lights. So we're actually rolling into a tunnel right now and we'll notice that things change pretty dramatically inside of the car as the LED lights kind of come on and you get this nice glow. Of course you can choose your color because that's important because what if blue isn't your thing? But uh, I think it looks fantastic and it does it very smoothly so it's not like an abrupt like a flash in your eyes it kind of comes up gently and then goes away as you pull out of the tunnel it goes away so you can enjoy that at night you can also change the intensity of it as well as that color now behind me is maybe sort of the the benchmark in in this class and that's the Audi S4 it's a it's a true competitor in in price performance every category to what the 2021 TLX Type S is all about. Um, they're very similar in concept, where this, these are an S model versus with Audi, of course, you get the RS model, and with Acura, you'd have a R model. Uh, so, so very similar in concept. Differences are, are pretty substantial, though, as far as under the skin. What you see with the Audis is they use a longitudinal in this class of car. So the engine is long, it's still a V6, but it's a longitudinal setup with their Quattro system. It does have an available torque vectoring rear differential, though it's an option on the car where it's standard on the Type S. So let's hop in this one, take it for a little bit of a drive. We spent all day driving the new Acura, 
So it's always good to be a little grounded and, and jump in the benchmark in the class and, and see if all the things I've been thinking, feeling, and saying about how I like the new Type S hold up. First impressions of the S4, I'm in a German car. The way I could tell right away, the hardness of the seat foam. Not necessarily a bad thing. If the seat's really well designed, the seat doesn't have to be really soft, but that was really obvious the first time I got in it. Uh, and also, the gauges. Um, kind of interesting, you don't have dial gauges, they're linear gauges, so that's, that's interesting too. Um, got a little bit more of a throaty exhaust note, a firmer ride right away. Um, a little bit lighter steering, for sure, and a little bit more NVH. Like I, because of that firmer seat foam, uh, I feel vibration right now as I'm driving. Just kind of a little buzz from the tires, kind of that's coming through that seat, and I can feel it. But um, torquey little engine. I mean, these things pull pretty well. Has a nice power band. Again, we got a turbocharged V6, so the the horsepower numbers are actually quite similar. But if I'm being really honest, this feels one or two generations older than the Acura, just by the look, how spartan the interior is. I'm, I'm missing that, that hand-stitched dash. I'm missing those Alcantara uh, inserts in the seats. I'm missing all the adjustability with the bolstering uh, in those much cushier seats. So one, one example of, of this car feeling a bit dated inside is, is you look at the interior of the car and the dash and everything, and it, it looks like an older car that they've changed the display up here and, and made that a, a full like LCD display or OLED display. And then they just tack this screen on. It's not all integrated into the interior. And so that's what you see in, in the Acura. Brand new car, brand new platform, you know, new chassis. You know, all this technology isn't been just sort of added onto the car year by year. The car was designed around all the new technology. And so everything looks a lot more integrated when you look at it in the vehicle. Especially when you look at things like the steering wheel. It's a very old looking steering wheel design. Again, nothing wrong with it. It all works well, but it, it looks like I'm, I'm looking at 2015 right now, not 2020, 2021. Now jumping back into the Acura after just driving the Audi and, and you know, again, what a, what a difference. You know, when we've got a hand-stitched dash, we've got Alcantara, we've got a flat bottom steering wheel like Audi would put in an R8, you know, but it isn't in an S4 and that's what competes against this car. And you can see the screen, you know, everything about the car, it's, it's just better integrated. It still kind of sticks up a little bit, but the idea behind having a screen that sticks up is that you're trying to keep it in the line of sight so you're not having to look down too much. And on the track, I was like, boy, I could sure use more horsepower. And then driving it on the road, you realize, no, it's, it's, it's a good amount of horsepower. It's a quick enough car. Uh, the only cars that feel like they have enough horsepower on the track are the cars that feel like they have too much horsepower on the road. You know, things like Hellcats and stuff like that, or Porsche 918s. You know, they feel really good on the track. Like, this is the right amount of horsepower. But when you're talking about a daily driver road car, this car is plenty quick and um, a very refined powertrain that gives you good torque del delivery characteristics, meaning you don't have to wring its neck, you don't have to downshift four gears to get it to go. It'll go right away in the gear you have it in and also the transmission works well enough that it downshifts really before you need it. It, it knows. So thank you, Acura. We certainly had fun out here at Laguna Seca. We got to drive around beautiful Monterey, went down through Carmel. And I have to say, you know, and, and again, maybe I'm a little bit giddy because I'm just so happy to be actually testing uh, a performance sedan. It seems like these days it's SUVs and it's electric vehicles and it's crossovers and hybrids and all that stuff's great and they all have a place. But in my heart, if you guys know me, I'm a performance guy. And so to get behind the wheel of something where, you know, Acura has, has taken 10 years to reintroduce uh, the Type S and, and to kind of go through it bit by bit with a technical briefing and then getting to kind of see whether all that stuff that they're claiming about the vehicle actually proves itself out on the road or on the track. And, and so it's been, a, it's been a great day. And I have to say the car has impressed me. So would I consider this over uh, the latest Infinities, the BMW M340? I would. I, I think this is a really strong car from from every perspective. It makes a great daily driver and the sort of the feasibility and the, the range within the drive modes 
give you a daily driver that can be really comfortable, yet turn that thing all the way to Sport Plus, you can leave it in drive in Sport Plus and rip around a racetrack in it and the car feels totally at home. So congratulations, Acura. I think this thing's a bit of a home run. Thanks for having us out, it was really fun. And come back to TFL Car for more independent and honest reviews.